Hi, I've been trying to do some research online to see how to uh, service my valve cover uh, gasket replacement. I have a 2012 Cayenne <clears throat> uh, S with a V8 engine. Um, figure if I can if I can find a resource online and I can just start to do this uh, project and film the whole process. Um, hopefully this will be helpful and useful to other uh, Cayenne owner and, and maybe they want to tackle this project themselves. So um, enjoy. Already remove all the the plastic cover. So right now I'm going to start taking out this piece, another plastic level. And here, there are quite a few bolts that I gotta remove. I believe first I need to remove this air box first. So, so earlier I removed the air box. Uh, I removed this corrugated condor that connected to the air box here. And I'm sure you can find other videos that show you how to remove or replace the filter. So I found that I can probably just leave this box intact. Uh, then what, what I also did is once you once you open remove the air box then it has easier access to the screws here. It's a little bit tight for the last one. So I got this I do have this little tool with a low profile. And so I can put the T, I forgot which one. Uh, I'll comment on it later. It's a, it's a Torx. So we, that way I can reach in and unscrew it. Uh, similarly, what I have to do in here, remove this air box that also opened the room for easy access to the screw. But in order to get to this one, the one, the bottom one, you really to remove the plastic cover here, I gotta remove the engine uh, arm here. And I got that, I have a T50 with a little extension, should be able to give me enough room to remove this arm. I don't believe this is loaded, so it should be a fairly easy way to remove it. And of course, there's another one that hides behind it. It's a little bit tight space. Sorry for the lighting. It's kind of hard to see here. You can see that. So that, that would be another tight, tighter space. So I got, I'm going to use that spatial tool to remove it. So I got this T50 and a 16 millimeter that I'm going to put here to secure it.
like I say, this wasn't very loaded, so it's fairly easy to break the loose. And the associate knot. Put them together so I don't lose them. And right now, it's a little gasket. I don't want to lose them. You gotta be careful. So I gotta loosen this one too. Hose is kind of in the way, but once that's removed, this piece come out pretty easy. Now it's a good time to inspect where the bullshit is still good. It looks like my still in good shape, so I'm not going to not replace it. There are two different lengths, so I think that, yeah. So with the arm now out of the way, again, more clearance to remove those two extra bolt in order to remove the plastic cover. So I removed the screw and just for reference, this was T30. Uh, once I remove this, there's a little two plastic grommet or rubber grommet underneath. Just kind of wiggle them and pop them out. Another plastic piece, plastic piece out. So similarly, doing the same thing, pull this out. You see there are two little metal stub here that goes into the two rubber grommet. So with the plastic piece now out, the next thing I need to do is to remove the spark plug igniter. And for V8, there are a total of eight of them. So there's four here, and on the other side, we've got another four. So in here, there's also this thing that I can remove. I don't know what this is. Um, but it has two little metal groove. So we simply just kind of pop this out. And I believe what I want to do is there's a metal clip you push down and pop. And now that's disconnected. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. You can see this view. So 
hopefully I can easily remove those spark plugs and ignition coil. So you can see this place, this area is very, very tight. Um, you can barely feel your hand into here. Very, very tight. So in this one, I've been using an E12 uh, socket to remove it. Again, I just, just crack this open, then I turn it by hand. I find that's probably easier. I mean, I can use tool, but this worked too. And the wire here is a little bit tighter. See there? So I think this tool works pretty well. And I squeeze in there. This little plastic clip. Kind of get that out of the way. bolt and hold in it. Now I just need to do take out the ignition coil. Just do a little twist action and pop. There goes one. And remove all of them. So before I move, remove all the coil. I want to make sure I blow out the 
insert. That way we don't have anything debris fall into the engine itself. So I remove the ignition coils. Like I said, there are four of them on this side. They also notice there's a uh, there's a vacuum line, vacuum hose, which I will press this two and pop it out. And remember this one. So but I can't just put it there. What I did is I kind of pry open pry this little tap. This is a screwdriver, lightly. Tap it up and kind of notch this off. So by doing so, now they're disconnected. And I think if I just, once I remove the vacuum hose, I should be able to remove this three big bowl and attempt to separate about color. So I found this rather difficult to move if I just try to squeeze it by hand because on the back it's pretty tight. So I ended up I just used this little screwdriver to notch to try to kind of lift up the tap. So you don't want to do it too hard, otherwise you break the tap. That would not be good. So I'm just trying to kind of notch this gently. So I was able to, I managed to get this out, out of the way. And, and now there's this little uh, plastic bracket that holds the ignition wire, um, coil wires. And you can see there's a little, the, the plastic, they kind of just fasten to the tap here. So you just simply push them up. Here's another one. Pushing them out so they're out of the way. So I, my plan is once I get that, remove this three, then I'm gonna start to proceed to pop this open. So those are T45, and I'm going to use this to crack it open, and we should be good to go. So I removed those. Those are, you remember I used the T45, right? to remove them, but then I also realized those two is also attached to the bottom. So I use the E12 socket and I got, I loosened them up. So I'm going to just remove them by hand. Now that I removed those two bolts, I'm trying to find a place where I can wedge in. So I found there's a little gap here. So I'm going to start wedge in here. As I move, you can see they start to separate. So I'm just going to go slowly to get this wedge out. I don't want to crack anything. So. I'm going to slowly work my way around it. So earlier I was able to kind of wedge into here. So I wedged and see that I already made them loose, right? You can see the whole piece can now start to about to separate. You can see that. Right. And so, that's a progress. But the other thing I also need to do is this little cable.
time. Those cable tie that I need to un unclipped so I can remove the whole piece out. What a beautiful side. It was a little bit of a struggle to get it out. Mainly, there's a little cable in the back. Uh, right over here. It's also attached to the upper case. So I had to clip that, this particular cable, away from the case in order to free this up. And then, of course, this one is also blocking. So you have to almost like lift the cover up a little bit and slide. And you can see, so we have, this is the cam position sensor. And I will be replacing those gasket. Plus, now on the cover, looks like this is fairly pliant so it's actually in a decent condition i'll replace it anyway then the other thing i will replace is this one that's another possibility so since i'm like this far i'll be re replacing all this and i'll be cleaning all this ridge Make sure everything is clean. Looks, you know, now that I, after I remove it, it looks like it wasn't very bad at all. It was just a little bit of leak. It's not horrible, but I guess it's still okay to replace them. I mean, I believe those guys are maybe the original one. So I'll be okay. So the reason I was doing the valve gasket, valve cover gasket, because I had some leak like here. And the leak to drip all the way down in the bottom. Very, very minor. But now I'm looking at it. I'm wondering because there, this is a two piece ball cover. And this front piece between the two body, there's a little, there's this metal gasket between them. Now I'm looking at it, is wondering whether the leak is actually getting through that metal gasket and still like the rubber gasket here i am not sure but nevertheless i'm going to clean it up but like here is all very clean surface very very clean but here is a little bit more oily so maybe it's still worth it to just replace the gasket um, i've come this far so i'm going to clean this up and I'm going to put it back. So I, earlier I removed those rubber. So I cleaned up this area pretty well. All the perimeters. Uh, in some cases I use steel wood just to clean it. Make sure it's really clean. One thing you need to make sure is like between this gap, when the two pieces metal meet, uh, well, I have read some people they will use something like this, uh, like a gasket maker, high temperature gas maker. Use this um, to at least put a dab here in here so I'm going to put it back for this one 
Hopefully it works. And so when I put a gasket, everything's pretty easy. My actually is still fairly pliant. So that's good news. But there's certain area that's definitely more hardened because of temperature changes, uh, damage. But most of them is pretty good. The one thing that's kind of difficult, and this one is easy to replace too. One, one area that's difficult to replace is this ring. This ring itself is for the camshaft sensor. So you might as well just replace that. Uh, my, I have to use um, something that's small and flat to insert it and pry it out. Because this is actually has a little metal piece in there. So when you push, uh, when you pull it out, you would damage it. And we damage it. It has two pieces. This is also has you know metal uh, ring to it. So um, one thing is uh, a little trick when you try to press this in is somewhat difficult. But to to make it like go evenly flat going in, but if you have a twenty nine millimeter socket, it fits perfectly to the ring and then you can press down fairly easily and evenly. And that's, it's luckily you have something like this, let's just push it in. Well, I have a very bad news. I snapped the aluminum bolt. <clears throat> I wasn't even use a lot of force, but as we fasten it for the last stage, <clears throat> then it snap and the, the remaining sits in the housing. I'm just gonna leave it right now. Um, I hope the rest of the bow will hold the pressure down and <clears throat> that way we can, uh, I can fix it next time I open this up. So it's gonna be nasty. But that's the problem, right? This was the aluminum bowl. They're light, but they're really, really easy to snap off. I, I thought I was super careful, but hey, you know, still. Anyway, I'm gonna work on this side now. Um, similarly, in here, and remove all the spot, the ignition coils. Similarly, you got this, I don't know what that is, another sensor, same sensor that we have. I need to remove this, is this an oil, oil water separator, maybe. Um, so I need to remove those bolts here and, and start to take the rest of them out. And <clears throat> then hopefully, no more broken bolts. Yep. So there's a little bit of complication. There's this little plastic piece, plastic housing that I need to remove because it is right now mounted on the engine cover. And there's a little kind of secure, I don't know if you can see it. There's this secured, uh, Torx. It's probably a T30, but secure. And here's another one. Those two need to be removed before I can even get to your closer. I believe I need to take those out. Because there's a bolt behind this plastic piece. So I need to, even though I can feel it, it's my hand, but I think I need to first remove this in order to take this out. All right, so I have removed most of the bolts. Um, all of them, they're all like T30. I talk about this piece. I think this is the, yeah, it's definitely the, the power cable. 
I removed those two bolts earlier so that you can slide out of the way to reach a bow here. Like you can see it. So there, there was a bolt here. So I removed those. So I checked all of them. So now you can see there is this wiring cable that is kind of in the way. And what I need to do now is remove this bolt here. That way it will give me more room, more room to leverage. The other thing is, I was trying to find a place to crack this open and I found, just use a little screwdriver. I got, so this little one just not too much. I don't want to crack any case. Push up a little bit, then I use even a smaller flat head screwdriver and just jam it there. That allowed me to wedge my screwdriver here and eventually can pop this open. So now this is mostly loose. Then what I need to do is just Pull this out, pull it up a little bit and slide forward. So first I need to remove this one first. That way I can create more room. The other thing of course is a zip tie along the edge for this wire. So I just un I just cut them off. So, so it turns out there's just not much room for a socket. So I don't have one. So instead I use a six millimeter. I mean, it's not ideal, but this is not very, it's not torqued very high. So I was using this to just loosen it up just a little bit. That way I can remove this bowl. I see there's another one there, but I will probably just leave that alone. That way I just need to lift this up enough to create room to slide this out. I bet I don't really need to do that, but it's probably easier. So I took this off. It wasn't as easy as I thought because there's this humps that you must clear those humps, right? So you have to have enough uplift clearance. So you just need to be patient as you can work your way out slowly. But I do have to do a quite a bit of wiggling to clear, right? Try to kind of stay in the the position, just up, lift it up a little bit, and slide. Um, there's too many things here that's just blocking the passage. Um, here, the the AC tubing, this one is the power steering tube. All that is kind of in the way. It makes it real hard. But I'm glad I can't remove this bolt that gave me a lot of wiggle room to to maneuver so i'm going to put this back hopefully it's not as hard as i took it off on the other side it was much easier to put it back um okay so so my apology i didn't show you guys all the process that going through to Tear it out and put it back. It was quite a bit of work. It was easily take me, this whole job took me at least about eight hours. Um, there's a lot of discovery and I was talking about here. You gotta take out that plastic housing. And when I tried to put this back, the gasket for the spark plug uh, was keep falling off. So I have to kind of struggle a little bit to pull it back. Um, after that, learning from earlier, I, I gingerly torque each bolt um, so I don't break it. Almost fine, like working with those, this kind of aluminum engine, you just got to be super, super careful. Uh, I did put more of those um, gasket um, red compound at the joint 
like I was talking about between the front um, valve, um, the, the, the two pieces, I don't know what it costs, but the two pieces, then I put a little bit more of those red compounders to make sure it's sealed. Uh, now I'm going to put this back now. Uh, there are a lot of video how to put it back. I'm going to put the arm, the plastic piece back, put the arm back. Those are pretty, pretty simple, I would say. Uh, all in all, I think it's doable, this project for a DIY. It just, you got to take your time to do it. Um, I would say if you don't have to do it, don't do it. It's quite a bit of work. Um, but like I say, I have some oil leak here. Uh, that's what motivated me to do it. So I think it's still still a good project for me to do this weekend. Um, I hope this, I haven't seen any video out there to show how to do the valve gasket replacement for the second generation, second generation Cayenne. Uh, VA engine. So I figure I should do one since I'm doing it and hopefully somebody can build on top of it. Uh, thanks.